और इस मुल्क में कुछ ना कुछ तो हो रहा जिसके वजह से इतने इतने दीगर किस्म के लोग अलग अलग अपने मुद्दों को लेकर सड़कों पे आ रहे हैं आप लोग आ रहे हैं आपका फेलो स्टूडेंट जो अभी तक गायब है उसके बारे में आप सोच रहे हैं कि क्यों और कहीं ना कहीं मेरे ख्याल से बहुत सारे अलग अलग तबके हैं जिन्हें ये महसूस हो रहा है कि उन पर एक हमला जारी है किसी न किसी तरह से और उस हमले के जरिए उनको अपने आप को एक वॉर का ऑब्जेक्ट कभी कभी मालूम हो सकता है दे आर फेसिंग जनरल पीपल ऑफ दिस पार्ट ऑफ द वर्ल्ड और मैं सिर्फ हिंदुस्तान की बात नहीं करूँगा अगर आप पाकिस्तान देख लें कश्मीर में तो जंग है ही और बांग्लादेश देख लें म्यांमार देख लें नेपाल देख लें श्रीलंका देख लें इन दिस इंटायर रीजन और इस रीजन से भी अगर हट के हम थोड़ा जाएँ अफगानिस्तान इराक यमन सीरिया इन सब तमाम इलाकों में अफ्रीका में कहीं ना कहीं आम इंसान पर एक हमला बोला जा रहा है और उस हमले के तहत हमें पहली बात तो ये समझ लेना चाहिए कि ये जंग और अमन का जो फ़र्क हमें बताया जाता है ये हमारे दौर में ये धुंधला है ना तो ये अमन है और ना ही जंग इन दोनों के बीच में कोई एक धुंधला सा एक मंजर है और उस धुंधलेपन के अंदर हम इस वक्त मौजूद हैं और उस धुंधलेपन के रहते हुए मेरे ख्याल से कुछ लोग अपनी राह निकालने के लिए टैंकों की ज़रूरत उससे ज़्यादा होती है कि वो भूल जाते हैं कि वो किस धरती पे खड़े जंग एक या अमन एक दुनियाई एक आलमी एक ग्लोबल सिचुएशन उसके अलग अलग दुनिया के अलग अलग हिस्सों में अलग 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 लोगों आवाम के बीच अलग अलग कौम के बीच उसके अलग अलग मैनिफेस्टेशन हो सकते हैं लेकिन ये हमें कतई नहीं समझ लेना चाहिए कि अगर कोई किसी मुल्क में अभी तक फाइटर बॉम्बर नहीं है तो वहाँ पे जंग नहीं हो रहा है और हमें ये भी नहीं समझ लेना चाहिए कि अगर इराक और अफगानिस्तान के मैदानों में बहुत सारे सिपाही शहीद होते हैं तो उनमें अमन चैन और शांति की तमन्ना नहीं होती जंग के बीच में लोग शांति की तलाश करते हैं और जिसे शांति करार दिया जाता है उसके बीच में वो जंग पहचान है अभी पहली आलमी जंग फर्स्ट वर्ल्ड वॉर का जिक्र हुआ विल्फ्रोड ओवेन की बहुत खूबसूरत नज्म है उसके बारे में कविता ने बताई थी और कम लोग जानते हैं कि विल्फ्रेड ओवेन जब वो फौत हुए तो उनके पॉकेट में एक नोटबुक था और वो नोटबुक बाद में मिला और उनकी अम्मी ने उस नोटबुक में एक पेज देखा था जो फोल्डेड उस पेज में रविंद्रनाथ ठाकुर की एक कविता इंग्लिश में गीतांजलि वर्स 96 का ट्रांसलेशन है वेर आई गो फ्रॉम वॉट आई हैव सीन इज द आंसर पास तो वो 1916 सत्रह आज से ठीक सत्रह सौ साल पहले विल्फ्रेड ओवन एक आप जैसा नौजवान लड़का उसने जो देखा ही थॉट इट वॉज दी आंसर पास कि दुनिया की तारीख में ऐसा कोई सिचुएशन उसे नहीं पता था कि इस तरीके से लोग एक दूसरे को मतलब दट देव बिकम डेंजर्स दम सेल्स एंड टू ईच अर लेकिन उस जंग के दौरान जैसे कविता ने कहा ना कि उन्नीस सौ सत्रह में जब रूस में इनकलाब आया तो उसने सबसे काफ़ी बुलंद जो है रोल सिपाहियों ने थे और उन सिपाहियों को उस वक्त गद्दार कहा जाता था और उन्होंने गद्दारी का तमगा बड़े फख्र से करा क्योंकि उन्हें उन्हें ये पता था कि ये जो रूसी साम्राज्य के साथ गद्दारी है वो दुनिया के साथ और दुनिया के मेहनत पर शोर के साथ वफादारी तो जिस अगर कभी भी आपको कोई गद्दार कहता है तो आपको हंस के फख्र से उसको अपना लेना चाहिए क्योंकि अगर ये दुनिया किसी चीज़ पे कायम है ना अभी तक वो गद्दारों की डिमांड पे कायम है क्योंकि अलग अलग मुल्क अलग अलग कौम के लोग जब एक दूसरे के साथ लड़ाए जाते हैं 
تو جو گدار ہوتے ہیں وہ امن قائم کرتے ہیں they are the people who create peace on all sides and they are called traitors میں ہمیشہ سے گدار ہوں ہمیشہ رہا ہوں مجھے اس میں کوئی پرابلم نہیں تو دو تین چیزیں آپ کے ساتھ شہر کرنا چاہتا ہوں علم education اور جان and the training for education and its relationship to war یہ بھی ایک عجیب دلچسپ قسم کا جان ہے اور اس میں جان کی طرح رپورٹس بھی آ سکتے ہیں ایک ٹینک کا ایک یونیورسٹی میں داخل ہونے کا کیا مطلب ہے یہ آپ کا ایکشنی آج کا موجود ہے what is the meaning of the tank بہت اچھا اور اندہ سکتا ہے کیونکہ جیسے قویتہ نے کہا the university is a place to ask questions an army is a place to follow orders you do not ask questions in an army you have to ask questions in a university اور یونیورسٹی کے جو الگ الگ زبانوں میں اس کو جو کہا جاتا ہے اگر آپ سوچ لیں ہندی یا میری مادری زبان بنگالی میں ہم اس کو بیشو بیدالو یا بیشو بیدیالو کہتے ہیں اردو میں دانشتاہ کہتے ہیں کہیں پر میں نے یہ نہیں سنا کہ یہ یونیورسٹی اس کو جو نیشن ارس اس کو جو یونیورسٹی فور در ریزن اس کو جو یونیورسٹی فور در ریزن that knowledge must be considered as true and desirable no matter where it comes from एक एक बात बताई जाती है पैगंबर मुहम्मद के बारे में कि वो कहते थे कि अगर कहीं तो भी इल्म लेना है तो चीन से भी अगर लेना है तो चीन जाके इफ यू हैव टू फाइंड नॉलेज इन चाइना यू मस्ट गो टू चाइना टू सीक नॉलेज क्लियरली ही वाज अ ह्यूमन बीइंग हु अंडरस्टूड दी दी इम्पोर्टेंस ऑफ � that the world of knowledge is not constrained by what Tagore used to call the narrow walls of domestic borders or something like that. Unka jo hai na ki chitto jeta jeta where the mind is without fear and, and the head is held. Chitto jeta hoya shunno unno to jeta shir. Right? Where the mind is without fear and where, the, where, where reason and the imagination is not constrained by narrow domestic walls. So university is called the university for that reason. It is a place where you're taught, first of all, to be beings in the universe and citizens of the world. And very often, being citizens of the world and a world such as ours, which has become smaller and smaller, where every question that needs addressing, whether it's global warming, requires you to think in global terms, and many other questions such as what will happen because of the bed bug menace in JU, requires you to think in very local terms. Almost all political questions have to be dealt with simultaneously at the level that is global and at the level that is local, and with several intermediate stages in between. The cult and the fetish of the nation actually stops you from thinking in these more generous dimensions. Sometimes you need to think in terms of what happens in a given country where borders are constrained and, and policies are determined by states within countries. But even those have to be looked at in terms of the relationship between what is happening in the world and elsewhere. آپ لوگوں نے سنا ہوگا کہ آج کل بڑا کرائیسس پڑا ہے بینکوں میں بینکوں نے ہندوستان میں بڑی بہت بڑی لونے لے دی سرمایہ داروں کو بہت بڑی بہت بڑا کرس بہت بڑا رقم کرس کر دیا گیا ہے ایک کمپنی ہے بوشن سٹیل میں بھی پڑھ رہا تھا اس کا رپورٹ ہندوستان ٹائمز میں بوشن سٹیل ہے سٹیل میکنگ کمپنی that has been given a loans to the tune of 4,762 lack the whole rupees, which is roughly the annual budget, more or less, right? Uh, and part of the reason why that has been done is because there is a fall in construction in the Chinese construction business. So the demand of steel has fallen, prices of steel have fallen all over the world, and a state bank or Punjab National Bank or whichever bank gives a loan to a Jabalpur Bombay-based company. That's the relationship between the world, a place, and the society in which we live. So, tanks. Let's think a little bit about tanks. Pichle saal, Hindustan ki forge ke liye, amari jo agar puchna chahiye na ki kaun sar ap logo ko puchna chahiye, ABVP ke jo desh bakte, kaun sar tank istamal hota hai. 
हिंदुस्तान की फौज में इसको मालूम है आजकल मेन बैटल टैंक कौन सा है वाटर टैंक टी टी नाइनटी टैंक रशियन टैंक तो उसकी देर इज अन्वेंट्री विच हैज टू बी केप्ट मेनटेन टू थाउजेंड सिक्सटीन दी गवर्नमेंट ऑफ इंडिया बॉट नाइन बॉट फोर हंड्रेड एंड सिक्सटी फोर टी नाइनटी टैंक्स अगर आप देखें हमारे जो वजीर अजम हैं जब भी कहीं दौरे पर जाते हैं कहीं ना कहीं इन्वेस्टमेंट की बहुत बातें करते हैं इन्वेस्टमेंट ज़्यादा आता नहीं लेकिन एक सौदा ज़रूर करके आते हैं कि भाई कितने आर्म्स हम खरीद रहे हैं और दिल्ली जो है आर्म स्ट्रेट का एक बहुत बड़ा मरकज़ है बहुत बड़ा सेंटर है इधर जितने भी पैसे रहते हैं वसंत विहार वगैरह इन सब जगह में बेसिकली आर्म्स डीलिंग के ऊपर रहते हैं सब बिग इंडस्ट्री है तो चार सौ चौंसठ टी नाइनटी टैंक्स खरीदे गए पिछले साल रकम थी एक सौ चालीस वन हंड्रेड एंड फोर्टी बिलियन रुपीज एंड इंडिया हैज फोर हंड्रेड फोर थाउजेंड फोर हंड्रेड ट्वेंटी सिक्स टी नाइनटी टैंक्स वन सेट वॉज अक्वायर्ड इन टू थाउजेंड एंड टेन अपग्रेडिंग टू थाउजेंड सिक्सटीन अनादर फोर हंड्रेड सिक्सटी फोर बीन अक्वायर्ड सो फोर हंड्रेड सिक्सटी फोर इज रफली टेन परसेंट ऑफ द टोटल टैंक स्ट्रेंथ Several battalions and regiments. Okay, what's the annual budget of JNU? Do you know that? Huh? Arey, ye to pata hona chahiye. Aap itni moche moche karte ho, na? But all the other, it's five billion rupees. That's the annual budget. You can download it from the JNU official website. So, 464 times cost 140 million rupees. In 2010, one T90 tank cost 12 crores. That was in 2010. Costs have gone up. Putin likes, you know, the Russian regime likes all the money it can get. So, what again? पिछले साल इस साल एक अप्रैल में JNU put in a put in a request to the UGC कि आपके non net fellowships का रकम आया नहीं था. किसी को ये मालूम होगा आईसा के लोगों या इतना तो मालूम होना चाहिए कि व्हाट वाज द अमाउंट ऑफ नॉन लेट कंप्राइज द टोटल नॉन लेट फेलोशिप डेफिसिट नहीं पता इलेवन सो वन क्रोर लेस देन द कॉस्ट ऑफ वन टी नाइनटी टाइम राइट सो द डी कमिशन आई डोंट नो इफ देन पुट टी नाइनटी आई डोंट थिंक � टैंक बनी थी विजयंता टैंक चली नहीं रिपब्लिक डे के परेड में बहुत आती लेकिन चलती नहीं उसको लगाया नहीं टैंक लेकिन टी नाइनटी टैंक का एक पीस आप के यूनिवर्सिटी के यूजीसी नॉन नेट फेलोशिप्स का पूरा रखा तो वेन यू आर गोइंग टू द यू जी सी हेड क्वार्टर्स टू से हमें अपना फेलोशिप नहीं दे रहा यू नो वाई इट्स बिकॉज ऑफ वन टी नाइनटी टैंक फोर हंड्रेड एंड सिक्सटी फोर टैंक्स का जो टोटल रकम है हंड्रेड एंड फोर्टी बिलियन रुपीज उससे जे एन यू के लेवल के इतने स्टूडेंट्स इतनी डिपार्टमेंट्स इतना इंफ्रास्ट्रक्चर इतनी हाई क्वालिटी ऑफ स्कॉलरशिप कितने चल सकते हैं सिंपल ट्वेंटी एट वेरी गुड सो विथ लास्ट ईयर्स एक्विजिशन ऑफ टी नाइनटी टैंक्स Government of India could have opened 28 JNU level JNU style universities all over India. So think again. When the tank comes, you know what are universities are not open. Okay, that's just tanks. Tanks are relatively cheap. They don't take much to build. A chassis होता है, काफी सारी steel लगती है. A copper turret होता है. एक फ्लेक्सिबल टारेट होता है विच शुड रोटेट 270 डिग्री 360 नहीं करेगा क्योंकि 360 क्यों नहीं करेगा पीछे मतलब अपनों को नहीं मारना 270 तो इट्स डजन टेक मच टू बिल्ड अ रोटेटिंग 270 डिग्री रोटेटिंग टारेट विद का सो इट्स नॉट दैट एक्सपेंसिव अदर टॉयज आर मोर एक्सपेंसिव न्यूक्लियर वेपन सर ऑफ कोर्स मोस्ट एक्सपेंसिव उनकी तो बजट हमें पता ही नहीं है बिकॉज 
the Department of Atomic Energy and the Nuclear Weapons Command actually does not even get its budget audited by the Parliament. It is a secret. So as citizens, we are paying for nuclear weapons. We don't have any idea or information or knowledge about how much money is spent on nuclear weapons into their national secrets. But we do know something from other things. So, last year, I mean this year, in July, Modiji went to France. Remember? Okay. The French defense minister made one speech in which he said, thank you for coming here. Because nobody is buying our weapons. <laughs> At last, someone's come. So, he bought six Scorpion submarines. These are blue water submarines. They cost 500 billion. That's 100 JNU style universities. Okay. Then he bought, bought, then he did a 1500 crore upgrade for 51 Mirage. Mirages are the fighter aircraft and they've been bought from France. We regularly buy them from France. So it's the upgrade here. That cost again 150 billion, 30 JNU style universities. And about 10,000 crores acquisition of 490 missiles. 100 billion, 20 JNU style universities. So just at the level of hardware and upgradation for a few tank regiments and a couple of battalions of fighter aircraft, you could have 150 plus 20, 178 JNU style universities. Okay? This within the two years in which there has been a secular decline in the education budget. If you compute the education budget, keeping in mind inflation, you will realize that although the government says 9.9% increase in education expenditure, there's actually been something of the nature of a 16 to 17% cut in university and higher in education, the brunt of which has to be borne by higher education. Primary education doesn't expand but it doesn't get cut. Higher education actually gets cut. Which is why you have how many less seats in MPhil, MA, PhD. Which is why you have a freeze in the hiring of professors in your departments. Which is why you have people who have to supervise more PhDs than are humanly possible for them and that is used as an excuse to cut seats. Okay? So think about it. It's the tax that your parents are paying and that of course you are paying because every time you buy a packet of chips you're paying you know now you're paying more that is going into an economy that is primarily driven at this moment by the agenda and the imperative for war okay we are rapidly becoming like many other countries in the region like pakistan for instance are increasingly militarizing Pakistan is a country where the military actually controls very large sectors of the economy. They own farms, they own steel mills, they own large amounts of other kinds of capital. But gradually, as you see the intersection between, let's say, defense industries, so who are our leading defense industries? Familiar names, they are our leading everything industries. Reliance and the Adani Corporation. They do they are becoming increasingly a part of the defense-led growth scenario of the Indian economy. So key sectors of the Indian economy are becoming militarized. And it's not just what you think. It's not just producing tanks and a few, you know, aslavs. It's also the diversion of resources like steel, like petroleum, like coal for a common defense-led so in many ways, the current situation socially, economically, politically, that all of you are subject to, are a result of an increasing concentration of the military interests in policy making. And that's actually not such a surprising thing. Because in some ways, the only ways in which large regimes in this part of the world, also in other parts of the world, Currently, if you look at the United States, the chief of the Pentagon, who was never supposed to be a defense 
personnel, who's always supposed to be a civilian, is a general. The uh, Secretary of State is a general. The Chief of Staff in the White House, the man who actually signs the dinner invitations, is also a general. Right? So you can see that in the United States um, political scenario, because there is a clown who is a president, the business of governance has to go on. So the military moves in. Basically, we are seeing a military coup in the United States. A similar situation operates in, in Russia, where Putin, who grew from within the military intelligence apparatus, is actually in charge, together with generals who control large oil and gas reserves. A similar situation operates right now in China, where uh, Xi Jinping is basing his concentration of power within the Communist Party, which is a large faction ridden organization, purely on the basis of his ability to tap military strength and his factions within the army. Which is why you see this strange game that has to be played right now, both by the state in China and the state in India, which is the game called what, to be, what is to be done about the Bokram Plan. A warlike situation is gradually being created. Hopefully it will not generate a war. Hopefully sense will prevail in both countries. But it doesn't have to be war. That's what I'm trying to say. Is that the political nature of today's realities can be militarized without actually going to war. And the consequences of that militarization then visit our lives. It is used to repress people, say, our anti-national values, to say you cannot ask questions in, uh, in your university, to transform your university into a barracks. They don't need to go to war to create the hysteria of war. And that's what they're doing. And maybe things can go out of control because these are circumstances beyond anyone's control at some level. Sometimes things go wrong. It is famously said that the First World War started because the Allied powers sent an ultimatum to Serbia that they have to report by telegram within five days of an ultimatum issued, sorry, by the Austro-Hungarian Empire. The Serbian Foreign Ministry didn't have a functioning telegram. They could not report back within five days and the First World War. Sometimes wars happen because of the intensity and the level at which military preparedness takes societies and countries, and then one stray incident can produce a fallout. I mean, uh, in the discussions about in television and so on, you often find these retired generals who are here, 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 ज्योतिषी <laughs> 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 अब ग्राम दे बाबा पता नहीं क्या कहेंगे लेकिन जनरल लोग भी कह रहे हैं बहुत कुछ अब चीन में ग्रेट वॉल ऑफ चाइना दैट इज सपोज्ड टू बी अ डिफेंस मैकेनिज्म फॉर देम फ्रॉम द वेस्ट हमारे पास लोग कहते हैं हमारे पास वी डोंट हैव अ वन ग्रेट वॉल वी हैव अ दो वॉल डॉक्टर दो नेशनल सिक्योरिटी एडवाइजर का नाम अजय दोवाल बहुत बहुत बड़ा तो दो वाल जो हैं, उनको मैंने एक बार सुना था टीवी में, वो बड़ी कॉन्फिडेंट ही कह रहे थे कि क्या होगा, जान होगा तो देखें। तो क्या होगा? उन्होंने कहा हम कन्वेंशनल वॉर तो जीत नहीं सकते, बिकॉज़ चाइनीज़ आर्मी इज़ न्यूमेरिकली एंड इन मेनी अदर वेज़ फार मोर सुपीरियर, लेकिन हम जीत सकते तो हम लॉन्ग रेंज मिसाइल दाव देंगे शंघाई और सदर चाइना ने न्यूक्लियर वॉरहेड्स के साथ तो उनकी इंडस्ट्रियल बेस खत्म हो जाएगी चाइना की इंडस्ट्रियल बेस खत्म हो जाएगी तो ठीक है सो ना दिस टू टू मॉर्निंग सर टुडे इस टुडे इस एनिवर्सरी ऑफ नागासाकी 
and you have this Dovar doctrine of a man casually speaking on television saying ki Shanghai jaisa shahar hai mere khayal se Delhi jaisa Delhi se bada shahar hai itni badi abadi hai wahan pe hum aise bhi hum daag denge lakho karodon matlab lakho log mar jayenge ek jhatke ke andar hum jeet jayenge this is the kind of way in which the people who all you traitors when you question it and think so today on the 100th anniversary of the first world war on the <coughs> 72nd anniversary of hiroshima and nagasaki on the 55th upcoming anniversary of the disaster that was india's china war in which india was in attacking power not the other way around don't let me want to i'm not an apologist for the chinese state but the indian government repeatedly British colonial powers about the maintenance of borders that were created by fraud and force. So this is the nationalist legacy that is being continued by our military and foreign policy experts. Abhi 42 ka zikr aaya tha. Main iske saath ek do cheeze kehte hain ek khatam karunga. To 42 mein hamari nationalist leadership naturally unhone kaha ki ye hamara jab nahi hai. Theek hai? people are facing one actually people were also tired of the war people were tired of the hardships that were produced rashan the war the 42 may bengal famine war which is directly related to the second world war and its associations millions of people died in bengal in a man made famine that produced a lot of sadness and anger naturally people wanted their government which was at that time the colonial government to end in 1946 after the war ended and demobilization happened there was a series of mutinies strikes and revolts in the then british indian armed forces the royal indian navy and the royal indian air force and if you come from military families you should ask your grandparents about the royal indian navy mutiny in the royal indian mutiny royal indian navy mutiny which was led by ordinary sailors who were then called gaddars because remember there was a power in waiting we had a provisional government in which important national leaders like jawaharlal nehru yaqub ali khan sardar patel were already serving ministers the framework of the future of india and pakistan and its political order was already in place and the person who betrayed the sailors of the royal indian naval mutiny was none other than Lord Purush Sardar Patel. He negotiated with the sailors, saying, "Give up your weapons. We will listen to your demands." When the sailors, trusting their nationalist leadership, said, "Okay, these are our new, these are our leaders," they went at ease. Say. Three ships were sunk off the coast of Bombay, and about 600 sailors were killed. Bari. the act of treachery of the national leadership of those soldiers whom they were training were going to fight in their battles on behalf and this was at that time not just india it was a government in which the future leaders of india and pakistan betrayed men in uniform who were acting under emotionally their provisional command so when nationalists tell you about the betrayal of soldiers ask them first of all why do you send young men and women to war why do you create the conditions that require so many deaths what is the point of defending patches of territories in which no one lives what are we gaining by strategic advantages in himalayan passes or deserts where nothing happens other than some abstract idea of military advantage and i like to end basically by invoking since there may call the poetry two poems one by a named gadda a pakistani poet for ahmed faraz who is well known for love poetry very beautiful love poetry and he wrote poem in the wake of 1971 in 72 which was after the bloodbath of bangladesh and during another blood bath which is less well known in balochistan because there were liberation movements in balochistan 
exactly as there are liberation movements and struggles in Indian occupied Kashmir. And Ahmed Faraz wrote a poem in which he said, Peshevar Patilo, Um Sipahi Nahi. Mene Abtak Tumhare Kaside Rekhe, or Aj Apne Nagmo Se Sharminda. Everybody understands that? Yes. Right? Professional killers, I do not consider you soldiers. I have written elegies to you and they made me ashamed today. Sina Chakane Mashrik Ni Apne Hite. Jin ka khun muh pe mal ke tum aaye. Matlab, Sina Chakar, humare, humare badal ke, wo hisse, mashrik in the east, jo mangal ke the, un ka khun tum apne muh pe laga ke wapas aaye. Referring to the almost genocidal violence that the Pakistani army unleashed in East Bengal from March to December 1971. Inke nasle badalne ko tum aaye the. Famously, Yaqub Khan at that time, the dictator of Pakistan said, ye Bengali qom jo hai, inse kuch nahi hoga, inke nasle badalne hai. He basically meant uh, enforced policy of rape. That the Pakistani army would be encouraged to rape the people, the women of this people, so that the next generation, Kapoon Thoda, इनके तकदीर तो क्या बदलते मगर इनके नसने बदलने तुम आए थे और मर गए बंगाल के बाद बुलान में शहरियों के गले काट के आए बुलान इस टाउन इन बलूचिस्तान वेर ये पाकिस्तानी आर्मी के मैक्स सो दिस इज अ पोल बाय अ पोइट बिलवर इन पाकिस्तान but I think he had great courage to be able to call out the armed forces of his country for their inhuman brutal acts. Not soldiers, because soldiers do what they're told. It is the General Bakshi and the General Yafur Khan and the VK uh, Sinh. Yeah. But these are the people, yeah. Brigadier of the General Rawat, Armed Forces Chief of Staff. So, when Brecht says that the man in the tank is a noxer, there's a defect he can think. It's because the tank can't turn 270 degrees, but the human being, uh, the tank can't turn 360 degrees, but the human being. And as, since we have used the word, as a communist, we always say, I always say, that the interests of working people, of soldiers, of peasants, of students, <coughs> lies with other working people, soldiers, peasants, students, women, minorities of all kinds. In each country, in each state, people are asked to fight the poor of the other. Even within societies, people are asked to fight the poor. Abhi ye civil war to noida ne bhi hota जहाँ पे लोग ये कहते कि ये बंगाली मुसलमान हैं और ये बांग्लादेश हैं, तो that creates the legitimate legitimate question. That is how struggles of class, caste, land, women's rights, students' entitlements to education get distracted and deferred by things that actually have very little to do with your with your interests. The last poem that I want to read is by someone we all love, Sahir Rujyan. This is a poem written in 1965, during the 1965 And it's called Air Sharif in Sound. So I'm assuming that it is addressed to all of you. Air Sharif in Sound. Khun apna ho ya paraya ho, nasle adam ka khun hai. Jang mashrik mein ho ya mahalim mein. Amane alam ka khun hai. जंग तो खुद ही एक मसला है, जंग क्या मसलों का हल है? आग और खून आज बख्शेगी, भूख और इत्याज कल, हंगर एंड क्या कहें? उफ़लसी मजबूरी। बर्तरी के सबूत की खातिर खून बहाना ही क्या ज़रूरी है? ग्रोथ, बर्तरी को ग्रोथ 
گھر کی تاریخیاں مٹانے کو گھر جلانا ہی کیا ضروری ہے بم گھروں پہ گرے کے سرحد پر روح تعمیر زخم کھاتی ہے کھیت اپنے جلے کے اوروں کے سیس فاقوں میں دل میں لاتی ہے اور اب جو ہے آج کے لیے سب سے عمدہ ریلیونٹ لائن ہے ٹینک آگے بڑھیں یا پیچھے جائیں کوک دھرتی کی بات چھو تو اگر ٹینک یہاں پہ چاہے وہ سو میٹر آگے بڑھا یا پیچھے تھا اس دانشتہ کی دھرتی بانج ہوگی اگر یہ ٹینک بڑھا ہے فتح کا جشن ہو کہ ہار کا سو کارگل مجھے فتح فتح کا جشن ہو کہ ہار کا سو زندگی میتوں پہ ہوتی ہے اس لیے اے شریف انسانوں جنگ تلتی رہے تو بہتر ہے آپ اور ہم سبھی کے آنگن میں شمع جلتی رہے